Let me see some hands. Okay, virtual hands will do. Who likes saving time? Yeah, I know, that's most of us. There are some of you who like waiting rooms and long queues, but I'm not talking to you. When it comes to block design and chip integration, we can spend a lot of time on seemingly endless design iterations. But you know what can help that? And help us save some of our precious time? Shifting left with caliber. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, David Abercrombie from Siemens and I explore the multitude of benefits that shifting left with caliber can bring to chip and block design. We investigate how caliber can impact DRC verification, early design error debug, and optimize the configuration and management of multiple jobs for one-time improvement. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Siemens. Hi, David. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, it's great to talk with you again, Amelia. Fantastic. Okay, so in our previous Chalk Talk, we discussed in general how Caliber is shifting left from its traditional final sign-off use model by deploying new functionality and capabilities that ensure models upstream in the design flow. So building off of that, David, can we talk about more specific examples about how these new solutions can help a typical design engineer in their everyday work? Yes, I think that's a good idea, Amelia. In fact, why don't we say pick people that do block design and chip integration? So this is kind of in the middle of the design flow. And in this diagram here, I think you'll see why their job is really a lot more complicated than I think a lot of us give credit for what they do every day. But you can see here that it's not just that they get all the IP or various pieces they need to put together to build a block or build a chip, and then they build that block or build that chip. It's actually overlapping series of iterations where the pieces that make up the block of the chip are themselves being designed and iterated upon. So in each of these, like a horizontal chevrons here, you see it's a particular piece of IP that will go into that block design that's going on in the bottom row. And each of those has their own design life cycle, and they're going through iterations where they start with just abstracts and putting themselves together, and then they turn into GDS, and that GDS gets cleaned up and edited revision by revision until any given piece of IP is finally done. And then there's multiple pieces of IP all being worked on by different people simultaneously. Meanwhile, the poor block chip creation engineer is trying to build this higher level piece of design, which is dependent on those sub pieces and can't wait until the end to start or nobody would ever get the designs out on time. So at various periods of time, they'll take a snapshot of whatever state the IP is in at that moment, and they'll begin working on placement and how to go put things together and begin to route them up and so forth and so on. And obviously, at different snapshot levels, pieces of IP are at different levels of maturity and cleanliness and that stuff. So they're simultaneously updating those, integrating that content, and then trying to design the upper-level piece of IP. So it's a very iterative, interactive, overlapping, mutually dependent design flow that's very complicated. And then moving to this picture, you see, and then when each of those times when they do a block design or chip integration, all of this work has to be done where they're synthesizing the higher level design, they're doing placement and floor planning, they're doing physical verification on that piece, and they're working on the clock tree synthesis and the routing and chip finishing the routing level and then physical circuit and reliability verification on the routing pieces and then final timing and ultimately multi-physics things they need to consider. So there's a lot of work every time they're doing one of those iterations. And I show here kind of the, the more legacy caliber tools that people associate with this flow and kind of where they get used in general. And I think prior to shift left, people think of, at that step, they'll use the caliber tool as the final sign off. They may use you know, other tools or they may use caliber in some of the iterations, but they may use built in tools in the route or whatever for some of the iterations and think of caliber yet yeah, is going to be that final verification that indeed it is clean and meets the foundry specifications. So that's the traditional view. And the shift left concept is to add all these new tools and capabilities you see in the bright green here that add all kinds of workflow that you can do 
in all of these steps that let you use Caliber, not just as the final sign-off, but in all the little iterations you're doing in a very efficient ways that save you time and, and they're still holding you to the Caliber Golden Standard as you do them, as well as new functionality. So this is kind of, with Shift Left, the new capabilities and stuff we're trying to bring into this very complicated and iterative design flow. So block and chip design seems complicated enough when you lay out all of the steps involved. But once you consider all of the overlapping design iterations between IP and block and chip design, it seems really overwhelming, David. Yes, yes indeed. It is a very tough task these designers have to deal with. And then you also listed a lot of new solutions here, but can you give us some more specific examples of how they can help with some of the challenges you pointed out? Yeah, absolutely. There's a many, many different examples, but I'll try to give some good highlights of several of these tools and how they enable a different use model and improve your efficiency. The first one is when you're using, you know, kind of doing your normal DRC verification, running your DRC checks, either at the placement level or at the routing level, the NMDRC recon tool is focused on running that more efficiently during the time when like all this IP is still, you know, not clean and you're integrating into these early iterations and it's the first few iterations of your block or your chip. So you're expecting lots of errors. There's errors that are built in the IP that you're consuming in, then there's errors obviously in the work you're doing and putting together the block of the chip. So it's going to be very dirty and typically, you know, DRC runs with millions of errors and stuff take a long time to run. So Recon helps automate the process of intelligently analyzing all the checks that are in the PDK and looking for which ones are going to consume massive amounts of processing time given the complexity of the checks and the types of checks that they are, whether they're looking at density or connectivity or those kinds of things. And it says, at this early stage of the design, when it's very dirty, this whole set of checks don't even need to be run right now because if the basics aren't clean, then obviously the checks that involve connectivity and the ultimate density and stuff are going to, no way, they're going to be good. You've got to clean up all this basic stuff first. That's the first priority you should do. So it automates selecting the optimal set of those basic checks to run that are run super fast and give you your first iterations on, ooh, this is what I need to clean up first. And so you can see by the chart here, just dramatic runtime improvements versus just running everything blindly so that you can, you can do these iterations much faster, saving you tons of time as you go through all those iterations I outlined. Moving on to this Caliber Auto Waiver gray box flow, it's like a layer on top of what I just showed you. So not only don't run these checks, only run these few basic checks that apply right now, also maybe don't run the entire layout. What do you want to focus on right now? You can see these three kind of use models here. This first one here is, okay, I'm working on the chip, and I know that three out of five of my IPs are just terribly dirty, but maybe a few of them are getting close to done. So I'll have this automatically turn off all the checking of the ones that I know are dirty and I don't even want to look at the errors that they've given me at this point. I just want to focus on the errors I'm creating at the top. But I will look at the material for some of these other IP, the checks, because they should be clean by now. So it does that, but it does that without just doing a blind box over it and hide them, which is a traditional way people would do it. I'm just going to block out this whole area because then you don't see the errors that you're creating from the top that interact with that piece of IP but aren't coming from the IP. This makes it intelligently where you still see those interaction errors with still hiding the stuff that's being handed to you from the IP itself. Or in the second use model there, maybe you are actually the IP designer. And of course you're looking at your IP, but you also want to see the errors you're getting interacting with the block or the chip that the person's integrating. So you could just focus on your particular piece of IP and its interaction with the upper level thing. Or again, as the chip or block designer, you just say, I just want to look at the errors on the interfaces between the blocks. All the blocks are dirty right now, and I'm not going to ignore what's going on in the blocks. I want to focus on how I'm connecting them up and am I creating errors in my connectivity. So you're basically running less than the full detail of the layout, which again makes it run super fast. You can see in the bar charts here, on top of getting the runtime improvement of the recon, you add the gray box on top of that, and it's even that much faster. So by focusing in on what matters right now in both of these solutions, you get super fast runtimes compared to running everything. 
which lets you just fly through those iterations versus running the whole thing over and over, which is now you can use Caliber in the iterations instead of waiting for the final sign-off. Similarly in LVS, when you run an LVS deck, you know, you're really doing checking a lot of things. You're looking for short isolations, connectivity conflicts, and ERC checks, and doing your layout versus schematic comparison. And that deck takes a long time to run, even when the design's clean. Obviously, when it's dirty and stuff right now, it's just going to blow up the run times. So LVS Recon lets you kind of pull those separate things that get checked apart and run them individually. Like you could do your short isolations and automatically have that run out of the LVS deck without running the rest of the LVS. So you can focus on cleaning up your short isolations while you're in these early design stages. Again, the whole idea is you don't have to edit your main deck. It automates everything for you. But by running a subset of focused checks, they run orders of magnitude faster. So you can iterate much quicker. And you can see in the table here, you get 5 to 65x increase in the number of iterations you can run. I can try something out, check it, try something out, check it, fix it, check it, fix it, check it. That just improves your productivity. Again, using Calibre as your work tool dynamically all during the day instead of just using something else and waiting until the end of the day to get the final Calibre check. With real-time digital, Calibre is actually integrated right into your design tool. In this case, say so your router, where you're not just dumping out the design, running Calibre on it, looking at the results, and then going back to your tool. Calibre can run right in there in the tool. So when you you start working on the errors that you flagged in a batch run and you zoom into an error and you start trying to fix the thing, as you move an edge, Calibre runs right there in the window, just on the data in the window, running the production checks and immediately tells you whether you fixed it or whether you created a new error. So you can, in real time, edit and see the result of the check. So you're getting real time feedback as you do the edits. Again, versus waiting and doing a batch run later. So again, super fast iteration, uh, real time. And over the course of doing a full chip, you can see in these examples here, 40, 60% savings in the overall time to closure because you can do these much faster iterations. And then finally, a thing that you've done probably forever in something like a place around tool, but can now can do in Calibre with Design Enhancer. So as part of that block you're building and that chip you're integrating, Typically, I've got to do via insertion where you're trying to double the vias for reliability's sake. You do power path doubling, basically. You add metal and vias to add redundancy in the power grid to reduce resistance and increase reliability. And then you have to do your decup and filler cell insertion. And these are things that the routers have done traditionally, and that's where people have usually done them. But typically, you have to have the router to do them. Then, of course, you got to have caliber to check them, make sure it didn't make any errors. When Caliber does it, we find, A, we can do it faster than the router. It's Caliber aware of all the checks, so it's Caliber clean as it's done. So you get faster performance in doing these things. They're Caliber clean when you do them. And we've seen them give better EMIR results than even the tools in the router. So this is you know, where Caliber is not only moving upstream to do what it's always done, but you know, doing something that you've done in another tool before. So again, lots of ways that just help your productivity help the iterations go faster to ultimately save you time in terms of tape out. That's cool. Now, David, it seems that Caliber has spent a lot of time thinking about more efficient and effective ways of doing things block and chip designers have been doing for a long time. I can see how these solutions would save them a significant amount of time during those design iterations. But is shift left only about improving efficiency of traditional design activities? I uh, know. I'm glad you brought that up. A whole new set of tool capabilities we've been building is in the multi-physics space. So these are new things that people are having to take more and more, especially advanced nodes, consideration of power analysis, thermal analysis, and stress, especially when you get in these multi-die situations or you know where this block, this chip you're designing is going to be part of a 3D stack or something, 3D IC. These are things you can't ignore anymore. They're not secondary effects anymore. So we're building new solutions. You know, these aren't typical caliber verification solutions for just looking at polygon pushing, but new tools that let you analyze power, stress, and thermal, the whole new types of verification that are new to the industry in general and new to us. So getting into this multi-physics area and providing solutions that you can use integrated with the rest of your caliber suite 
that can help you verify these new kinds of issues related to stress and thermal and power. And then another kind of area we're getting to is, is in general helping you optimize not a run doing a particular thing, which is traditional, but sets of runs and the, the series of things that you have to do. Uh, again, what we're seeing is a lot of people in attempts to speed up their time to tape out are what can I do in parallel? How can I automate a series of things that are going to need to be done? And a lot of that has to do with running the multiple set of jobs. You don't just run DRC. You run DRC and LVS and PEX runs, and you run multiples of them on different blocks and such. So in our Caliber Interactive tool, we've provided automation for aspect of multi-job submission and management, where you can set up a series of jobs, have interdependencies between them, like this job won't start until that job finishes, and so forth and so on. These can run in series, these can run in parallel, and you can set them all up, start them all, you can track which ones are done and ready to start looking at the results and which ones are still running at the moment or going to be running next. So you kind of manage your whole series of activities that you're doing with our tools. And then another, it's kind of a, a creative thing I think people have come up with is, again, this idea that, you know, something like a DRC run contains lots of checks of lots of different kinds. And a particular design engineer, for instance, may only be responsible for certain aspects, like maybe one person focuses on the ESD and latch up issues in the chip, and somebody else is focused on the, the basic, you know, spacing and width checks and stuff like that. And maybe a, another design engineer's responsibility with the density balancing of the chip or whatever. So a lot of times people will break up the deck into pieces. You know, this person run these checks. I run another run with just this subset of checks and the run with this subset of checks. Again, the multi-job tool now lets you manage setting up all those individual runs with different checks selected so you can manage those series of checks. But we went a step further. One of the reasons that Caliber is so amazingly fast, you'll notice when you run it, the first thing it does is this database construction step where we optimize all the data that's coming in and arrange it and set up all our operations. So then when you start actually executing the checks, they run super fast and efficiently and utilize the hardware well and all that kind of stuff. And it's all due to that upfront work that we do makes it so efficient and repeatable. But obviously if you break the deck into a bunch of little decks, each of those runs has to do its own database construction. Well, we've created this new way where you can have all the checks turned on and run just the database construction and stop. Then you can set up your split jobs with just a subset of checks, and they all can use the database constructed from that initial database construction run, and they can immediately start running checks. So you just run the database construction once and then spawn off all your split jobs, and they start immediately running the checks. And again, better throughput by splitting everything up and reusing the database construction. So again, constantly trying to think outside the box. Every little thing we can help you improve in efficiency. Not just, you know, this tool runs this check faster, but how you run your checks, what kinds of checks you can do, how can you automate turning this off then and that off then. And again, faster iterations, more focused results, and trying our best to save our customers time and ultimately money getting those chips out the market. Fantastic. It seems like the Caliber team has clearly been thinking outside the traditional box, so to speak. Thank you so much for joining me, David. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And thank you for sharing more detail about Caliber's shift left solutions. Sure, Amelia. It's always great talking to you. And we're always excited to show what we're trying to build and how we're trying to make designers life easier. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Siemens. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.